Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara, your one-stop shop to uh, making sure that you are updated on all the latest happenings with COVID. You get your workouts in, cooking inspiration, and life hacks just to make things a little bit easier. Yeah, now a little bit earlier on, we had Cheryl Lowe bringing you the best of body weight workouts with a twist, quite literally. She's our resident sports SG skipping sensation. And I don't know about you, but I can pretty much do single unders and that's about it. Yeah, 10 in a row and I'm on a roll, I think. <laughs> uh, don't forget that every morning at 10, we cut through all of the rumors as well to bring you the hard facts on what's going on with COVID-19 daily. Plus, we've got real talk with real people. We're going to be stretching you out both physically and mentally and help you ease into the day. Not forgetting our afternoon workout at 3 p.m. for that ultimate sweat session. Sakina from Uppercut is going to get you jab, cross and hooked with her later on and her sharpshooter skills. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get down to business, shall we? Yesterday, Singapore crossed the 4,000 mark as we saw a total of 728 cases. Now, guys, this includes the 654 of the foreign workers um, which make up the new patients. Five clusters, however, were identified and two more clusters have actually been closed due to no new cases appearing in the last 28 days. We're only a few more days away from that two week mark. So hopefully we will start to see things tailing off. Uh, just yesterday, Minister for Manpower Josephine Teo announced on Facebook uh, a three pronged strategy to manage the COVID-19 spread in the dormitory. So fingers crossed that that will work. Remember, there are a total of 12 foreign worker dormitories currently under isolation. I know it's rough for everybody, but please let's just send our love, our care and our well wishes out to these guys as well. They they are struggling just as much as we are, if not even more so. So compassion is needed and help if you can provide it to assist them. That's right. Now we absolutely love hearing from you, your comments, your questions, everything under the sun. Today's topic is what is your go to, I don't know what to eat meal. A uh, peanut butter jelly sandwich, maybe Indomie Kaya toast. Mm. I love Kaya toast, but the options are endless. So send us your comments and let us know what it is that you will reach to, uh, reach for in a pinch. Uh, easy, complicated, doesn't matter what it could be. But if you are commenting on Facebook, please make sure that you keep the conversation going. We had a comment yesterday that we addressed on our Facebook page. We had another comment regarding a similar sort of thing uh, about the sports industry and mm -hmm. how it's not the only industry that is affected. Uh, hopefully you guys understand that what we're trying to do is facilitate a conversation here. So it doesn't matter whether your comments are uh, good comments or constructive comments, we do wanna hear from you guys. So if you have something to say, please drop us a comment on Facebook, either on the One Play Sports page or the Get Active TV pages or any of the Sport SG pages where you're watching this live and let's start facilitating a conversation. So um, to, what was his name? That, Kim Joshua. That was it. Kim Joshua. Uh, you mentioned yesterday that it isn't just the sports and entertainment industry that's affected. And you're absolutely right. There are so many industries that are affected. The hospitality industry. Actually, our parents, Barbara and I, our parents have an SME. Mm. Uh, they have a small company that they've set up. And they've been incredibly impacted. So all the smaller companies that are struggling as well. I, I want you to know that you're not alone. There is assistance out there. And if you are struggling, uh, reach, reach out, out to someone. Mm. Talk to us and let us try and facilitate a conversation to the right people. Uh, or at least just let us know how you feel. Because at these times, sometimes we just need to talk to somebody. That's we right. are all frustrated. We're all going through the same thing. And we want you to know that this is a safe space to start airing your comments. We're looking for constructive comments, not keyboard Don't warriors. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're just trying to help be a platform for you guys to tell us how you feel and hopefully we'll be able to bring a smile to your face and hopefully we'll be able to help ease your situation by at least providing you with constructive feedback, comments, criticism, um, conversation, conversation. You know, there are so many out. different points of views when it comes to this kind of thing. Everyone's, you know, they have their own opinion and a lot of the time miscommunication means that there are clashes mm -hmm. and that's what we want to avoid. Uh, just understand that everyone 
comes from a different point of view and there are different aspects to everything. So aside from lunch today, if you'd like to talk to us, then why don't we talk about the mask situation as well? Straits Times yesterday released uh, an article saying that five out of six different masks are actually not as effective as they could or should be. So why don't we facilitate that conversation on Monday? We've actually got a mask expert from Novena Life Global Healthcare who is going to come in and share with us a few of the differences. But if you are out and about with your mask on, there are advisories out there about when you need to wear a mask. Uh, we'll be talking with our next guest, Stephanie Bovis, about wearing a mask as well. Uh, but if you've had issues with wearing a mask whilst you're out because you were exercising or maybe you just stopped exercising, uh, talk to us, tell us your experiences and let us know how you guys are coping. Yeah. So we are going to hop off for a quick break before we come back with actress, MC, yin yoga teacher, Steph Bovis. Don't go anywhere. the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. I've subbed out Barbara uh, with Stephanie Bovis. We are here to navigate your new morning normal. And each morning, what we're going to do is essentially bring you a fitness expert, a yogi, a physio, a chiropractor, someone who will help realign your body and get you all set up for the rest of the day. So you name it, we're going to bring them in. And today joining us is Stephanie Bovis. Steph, you are, like Barbara said earlier, an MC, an actress, you're a host, you're a travel presenter, you are a yin yoga instructor, you are incredibly fit. Like, is there anything you don't do? Oh, serial freelancer life, you know, especially in this day and age, sort of, you know, experiencing the consequences, mm -hmm. but not all for the worse. I think it's been really nice to just sort of understand where my focus lies and, yeah, freelancer life sort of my thing. So right before Circuit Breaker kicked in, mm. like sort of, like, it was March that you were still traveling, right? Yeah, I was away for a month, actually. New York and then Dominican Republic. New York prior to the Explosion. crazy epicenter um, outbreak. Yeah, it's nuts. Actually, the United States currently takes up something like a quarter of uh, all global cases right know. now. Yeah, I don't keep up with statistics because they change every single day. It's that staggering rates. Yes. <sighs> so tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, I mean, I literally left Singapore before going to New York, and back then it was still quite mellow, mm. and I was escaping the crazy from by, by leaving Singapore. 
And then Dominican Republic was just so, um, there was no anxiety, there was no fear, no one, it wasn't even on the forefront of anyone's mind. And then I was going to fly back to New York and then head to London and um, to see my 81-year-old father, and that obviously did not happen for obvious reasons. So I had to sort of reroute and then make my way back to Singapore by oh. flying through Miami. Yeah, I, I self-quarantined really, at least you know, a couple of days just to make sure I didn't. Good on you, but bred it. Must really suck to not be able to go see your dad. Yeah. Well, I mean, my family's been separated and staggered around the world for very, very long time. I was going to say it's probably as long as you can. Very remember. long time. Yeah, over a decade. But wow. it's been interesting to just the whole concept of home and where you feel safe and sheltered and, and that whole concept has been very foreign to me mm -hmm. personally forever, but it's been even more pronounced with this whole thing happening. I can imagine. Mm. So tell us a little bit then about your yoga practice and how it maybe helps maintain your sense of normalcy and all of this crazy. Oh, oh babe, it's keeping me sane. And it's also keeping me connected to the community because I do share uh, virtually and in live streams. And, and it's been, honestly, I, I just, I just love it mm -hmm. like and it's it's for the sharing aspect of the giving but also the connecting aspect. you've always been a giver haven't you ah, I try I try I try I think we're all we're all still a work in progress <laughs> I'm trying to give more so for everyone at home now mm -hmm. Steph is now going to give you some mm -hmm. stretches to do I'm, I'm going to discard my high heels because yes. that's probably not quite practical yes, but then you'll yes. see the height disparity not good for the, the posture <laughs> Kelly let's let's talk about that no okay. yeah so when I think about stretches I mean I got I came onto the show and uh, and I was asked to share three stretches I mean there there are a plethora of stretches mm -hmm. but I find if I'm going to share a stretch now it'll be one that sort of um, hits multiple areas of the body targets okay. multiple areas okay so let's get Keep into the minute. first one this one is going to be a forward fold because okay. we all like to get into our hamstrings but okay. with an added chest opener okay. okay so let's interlace the hands behind our back mm -hmm. okay we're trying to glue the palms together as much as possible okay, okay. if you can't then it's fine yep we're going to stretch the arms out behind you so you already feel a nice opening in the chest mm -hmm. okay keep the knees nice and soft and then we're just going to bend forward. Oh, good Lord. No one needs to see that angle. Okay. okay. So you feel, uh, if you do come into this, you may feel a nice crack in the upper back and Am into the shoulders. Right? And so this sort of targets the upper and the lower body. Wow. So it's just got like a blood rush. It's like instant blush oh for your God. face. And, 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 when you, and when you crack into the vertebrae, I mm -hmm. mean, isn't that the most amazing sensation or what? I mean, I, yeah. So that's the first one. And, and again, while you're here, mm -hmm. you can also... Rotate right to left, and this is just to get into our chests that are often very compromised now, especially in this era where a lot of us are sitting. <laughs> I don't, I don't oh, think sorry. I bend my butt, that way. <laughs> was my butt just? <laughs> yeah, okay. but it just it sort of opens up into the chest. Nice. And, um, the sec um, a pose that I'll demonstrate. Actually, now that we're while we're on the topic of chest, okay. let's get onto the floor. Oh, okay. So I, you know, I, we're, I'm sure a lot of us are guilty for watching Netflix and sort of. Uh, streaming through our shows, you know, we're doing a lot of this, a lot of leaning back, a lot of tightness into the chest. Mm -hmm. So I like to give poses that allow you to still be able to do that, still be able to watch a show, but in a way that's sort of different than the normal sitting position. Okay, so one of them is to come onto the belly and okay. into your sphinx pose as if you're tanning on a beach. Okay, so, okay? No, so even just by, oh, yeah, yeah. Feel, feel, feel into the belly, okay. but just by sitting like this, okay, and you can sit as if you're standing on the beach, your head is nice and supported, we're promoting extension of the spine and an opening in the chest, mm. okay, we're exaggerating the lower back, and just by doing this for five to seven minutes, you don't even know that you're here, but you're doing so much good for the spine. Wow. So you can get onto the floor, watch your show, do whatever you have to do, but still be benefiting your body in a certain way. So this is why when the kids get down off the couch and they're rolling around on the yeah. ground, like, exactly. it's not a bad thing. No, not, not at all. It's so good for you. Uh, another one, so that's the second one. It's called a sphinx. Okay. Okay. It's to just get into a nice, good old deep squat, oh, man. Good Lord. I mean, okay. obviously, Obviously, do the Asian okay, squat uh, thing. Okay, here yes, we go. yes, yes. I mean, if you can't, honestly, if this is not your skeleton doesn't allow it, or you're pretty tight in the hips, you can always sit on a cushion or in a block or in a meditation chair. I think here in this part of the world, they don't call it an Asian squat for nothing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, here you can just relax, chill. This is great for digestion. You can come into your twist. 
Okay. Like twisting over to the right. Mm -hmm. You can maybe incorporate more mobility in the shoulders. You can freestyle it here. I am definitely not as bendy as you. No, but it doesn't matter. I mean, just the fact that you're getting some movement into your shoulders, into your upper body. A really great one that looks kind of funny. It's called the chicken wing pose. You turn your fingers in towards you. Oh, tuck goodness. them sort of right by your ribs. Uh -huh. And then push your elbows together as you draw the chin to the chest. Oh my goodness me. I mean, hello shoulders, right? Mm. So you were opening up into the chest and we're opening up to the shoulders. So <sighs> I'm actually working up quite a sweat doing this. Shall we just stay and have the rest of our talk in this position? Sure, that sounds great. You yeah. were mentioning earlier on that you have Zoom sessions. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that for anyone that would like to yeah, come and join. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've partnered through it with ClassPass as well. Um, so I teach with Athlete Lab, and they're now, their classes are virtually available on ClassPass. But mm -hmm. I'm also extending the offer to anyone out there who wishes to join. Um, the times tend to change, but if you follow me on Instagram, I think that I'll, I'll always update you. But right now it's Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. And so how, much, up, how, say hello. how much does it cost so that people know? Uh, it's more of a donation base, okay. uh, just an offering. It's more of an energy exchange, you know, um, and and if you really, if this is not, if you, can, if you don't have the means to, to give a donation, that's also fine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about that. It's about just... It's all about the giving. <laughs> you're doing you're doing really well to give. Okay, I have to say this is probably the first time that I've ever presented on TV in an Asian squat. Um, Steph, thank you so much for joining no me. No worries. And for dear, making Kelly. me get into this position. Um, <laughs> hit Steph up on Instagram if you want to find out a bit more about her different Zoom sessions. Like she said, it does change, but Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. That's where it is mm -hmm. at the moment. At Stephanie Bovis yeah. is the Instagram that handle. So if you need to, you know where to look. Uh, we're going to go for a short break, but when we come back, we're going to take those pom-poms that we had yesterday and put them to even greater use. Don't go away. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in to the morning show with us as we aim to start your day with a little dose of Latima love. It's not easy being at home with the kids. Any parent will agree. <laughs> um, so let's take a tiny recap of what we've covered this week. We started the week creating schedules to help you see get some sort of normalcy in this entire mm. amount of chaos at the moment. Then we decided to make the cutest 
little bit of caterpillars. That's right. We had um, uh, there's a little bit of breath control going on there, which also led us into the pom pom races. Mm -hmm. um, again, focusing on the breath control, and you know, it, it goes to kids of all ages, yeah. right, from the young ones all the way, sorting out some organisation and cleanliness and, and in their life. Absolutely. And then Barbara brought us her extremely cool four ingredient slime recipe that actually succeeded. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, today. Yeah, today we're going to stick with the pom-pom theme, uh, which we have here. So like I mentioned, I got these pom-poms from Daiso. So they were $2 a pack. So they're absolutely fabulous. Nice. Um, and what I've decided to do is rehash an idea that I had incorporated with Sienna when she was probably about a year old to get a bit of hand dexterity uh, as well as get some color coordination going. And as she's developed and gotten older, she was able to identify the colors and actually voice them out. And I'm going to talk to you about how you can scale it up as well to the older children incorporating some mathematics and some number recognition and counting. Okay, what have we got? So all you need for this activity is a box of some sort. Uh, so I chose an old shoe box that we have. And the idea behind getting a box which you can open... How many open... shoe boxes do you have? Shush. <laughs> there is no need to bring this up on live TV. Um, but essentially, we want a box that you can open uh, okay. so that when you push in the pom-poms, the kid can then open up the box and then retrieve the pom-poms. Cool. Uh, what I did was then I stuck a piece of paper on top so that it's easier for the child to draw or in this case for me <laughs> to draw. Um, and we can finish off coloring. So I tell you what, Barbara, I'm going to let you finish coloring while I just explain what we're going to be doing. All right. So what you'll also need is a knife. Make sure that it is sharp, unlike Barbara's knife, which wasn't sharp mm. whilst chopping it onions. It wasn't that bad, y'all. It was pretty bad. It was fine. Uh, then you want to make sure that you've got a cutting mat just in case uh, you want to cut things through and just be a bit forcible. You don't want to be damaging any surfaces at home. You'll need those pom-poms and you'll also need your coloring pencils. Now it's completely up to you whether you want to be doing this by yourself or whether you want to get the kids in to assist. Uh, I like to pick a little bit of a theme or a little bit of a storyline in which to create these pictures. If you don't feel like you are very artistically inclined, then like what you me. can do is you could also just... Draw it and let them color it. Draw it and let them color it or just print out one of her favorite characters. So if they're mad on Paw Patrol, for example, then you can get them, you can just print out a Paw Patrol thing and, and go with it. But essentially what you want to do is you want to try and incorporate as many different colors as possible that match the colors of the pom-poms that you have. Oh, sorry. Did Okay. It's okay. We I was just checking, have... did I color that starfish the right color then? Or is yeah. essentially what whatever works. Um, but so what I've got here is we've got a purple octopus, we've got the blue water, we've got the turquoisey starfish, we have an orange puffer fish, uh, we have a gray rock, and we have a red coral. Uh, so the idea is that you want to come up with as many different colors as possible. Then what you'll do is you will take your knife and very carefully and very carefully. Um, let me just do this here. You will cut in holes. All right, it looks a little bit like, it looks a bit mean. It does look a little bit mean. I am just literally like slicing into his head right now. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to be cutting, what is that? Uh, you want to be across, but then you also want to do like a star because you want to be able to push in so that the, oh, okay. so that the, so that pom-pom can be pushed through easily. Do you know what it reminds me of? Those little kitty um, lunch boxes, like yep. the snack packs. Yes. Where they can reach in and grab a snack and nothing spills out. Exactly, exactly that. So what I've done here is I've just made a little hole there so that when she picks up the purple pom-pom, what she can do is then just boop, pop it in there, just like that. Yeah. What you do want to make sure that you've done is that you've stuck this entire piece of paper down with plenty of glue and let it sit and dry before you start trying to color or paint over it. If not, it just rips off. Otherwise it rips off right. or when you're using your knife to actually cut a hole in there, you end up with a lot of problems. Now I did say that you can scale this up. So aside from going on to colors, we can also do numbers. So how many legs does an octopus have? And then they have to go and identify 
how many legs there are, then you can yeah. pop eight pom-poms in there to match mm -hmm. it. Or you can just ask them, where is the number eight? And get them to identify that there are eight here, or there are, there are five, five on the starfish. Yep. Or I also did a little school of fish on the side over here. So how many fish are there in that little school? Or how many eels are there? So on and so forth. Oh, that's what that is. It totally looks like an eel. Don't knock it. It's cross. It could also be an overgrown tadpole. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Um, that is a fun activity that you could do with your kids uh, in order to get them to count, to identify colors. And, and like I said, I'm just going to cut up the rest of these here yeah. so that you can act, so that I can actually get Sienna to do it later. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to incorporate organization skills as well. Organization. And you also mentioned that you did it when she was a lot younger to promote ambidextry. Um, Dexterity. Dexterity, that was it. And yeah. She is ambidextrous, but... I was going to say, has that, has that kind of paid off? Yeah, for sure. I mean, to get a kid to be able to push something into a tight space yeah. with their fingers really does help with strength. It also helps with their pincer grip when they're trying to pick up the pom-poms and put them in. So whatever you're doing, you like it, it will help. Yeah, that's cool. awesome because I try writing with my left hand sometimes and it looks like a two-year-old trying to write. Mm -hmm. I can completely understand that. <laughs> Alrighty, that brings us to the end of how to amuse your kiddos. Make sure you join us again next week. Uh, actually, on this segment next week, we're also going to be showing you some kiddie products which we really, really enjoyed using at home. Uh, one of them includes headphones. Ooh. We're gonna be showing you a review that Sienna actually did uh, of the JBL Junior headphones, which are Bluetooth, so they're wireless. But for those wow. of you that need a wired headphone, we've actually also got that option as well. And we're going to be sharing that with you next week. So make sure you stick around on The Morning Show. That's right. Now, if you haven't had a chance to try any of these yet during the week, because even though we're staying home, we're technically still working from home. So you might not have the chance to do them. And the weekend is your time to shine. Get all of these done so that the kiddos can be occupied during the week. Don't forget to tag us on the socials. Um, we've got the Get Active TV Instagram. You can tag Kelly and myself as well. Um, I don't have a kid, but I love seeing them anyway, and sometimes I make these as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go for a little break, but we will be back. That is right, because when we return, we've got one of the leading ladies from Kin showing us the down low on what long-distance relationships are really like covid or not. If you've got any questions for Carla D, drop us a comment and stay tuned.
with us right here on the morning show for Family Friday. Thank you for hanging out with us this morning and thank you for all your comments. We love hearing from you, so keep them coming. Now we've got the ever radiant Carla D join us in studio looking like the glowing, <laughs> yeah. the vision of glowing loveliness that oh. you are. Okay, wait, what? So before we go anywhere, yes. Can you say your surname? Because after I said it on the show yesterday, everyone was like, did everyone you say it right? Thing. Did you say it right? So can you Okay, no, no, no. Then you got to say it first. Then I'll correct you. Carla Donariano. Again? Donariano. Oh, close, close, close. Okay, go on. Donariano. Donariano. I just need to sound like I got like a little bit of a tongue another. roll as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just try to sound super like Italian. Mm. Donariano. You'll get it right every time. With the... With the, the hand, hand action, action. Yeah. I like it. Makes it. all the yeah. Dunariano. Dunariano. <laughs> You'll get it right, I promise. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wasn't too far off. Okay. All right. Nice. I, I don't feel so bad now because I came <laughs> off and then I was just like, oh man, did I get that wrong? Uh, anyway, we, we've known each other for quite some time. Ages. Like 2010, we'd worked together during the Youth Olympic Games. So it's, it's yep. been a long time. Yep. Um, but you are an absolute high flyer at the moment. Kin, how's that teaching, treating you? It's good, it's good. I mean, uh, it's really fun. I think we've been doing Kin for like a year and a half, just wow. about. Um, yeah. It feels like a lifetime, but at the same time, it feels like that. It's mm. basically Singapore's version of a major soap opera. Oh, totally, <laughs> totally. This is my like claim to fame. I've always wanted to be a soap opera star, and now I get to like do the whole like, like look off into the distance uh, and have like one tear and all. It's amazing. I love it. I it's, love a, it. It's, it's a, 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 a local telenovela. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now we just need the subtitles of like me, my mouth and like the words just, just not, not thinking, not thinking. Yeah, at all. Yeah, that's what I want. And then we're almost there. Okay, so <laughs> tell us a little bit about your relationship. Yeah, you guys have been doing long distance like way before it was enforced because of COVID. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so what is the secret? So I feel like I've had really good training for COVID. Mm. You know, I feel like I was I was totally prepared ready. for this. Um, we, Look at you guys, oh, you're so cute. Oh yeah, so so uh, <laughs> that's me. You know, being very considerate in mm. in public, wearing my wearing mask. mask. That's my husband, uh, Mr. Boom Gonzalez. Uh, that was actually the last trip we took together. That was the last time I saw him. Uh, <gasps> when was and that? how long ago was that? This was uh, mid March. Like 14th, I think, 14th of March. About a month ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we went over to uh, Bintan, yeah, for a short little getaway, and it was so funny because we were meant to be there for for two days, mm -hmm. and then we got there, and then this whole like thing blew up, right? This this whole COVID stay yeah. home, and literally we we turned around within 24 hours, and we were like, nope. And we got back on the ferry, came back home. And the next day he flew off and then the lockdown happened and we were like, oh, damn, he should have stayed in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I just <laughs> needed to keep him here for 24 right. hours. Right. And he was like, baby, should I go home? Should I not? Should I? I'm like, don't don't put this on me. You got to make this decision. I can't be <laughs> responsible for this. Mm -hmm. And then he got on the plane and then Philippines was like, no, lockdown, nobody leaves. And oh, we were like, gosh. great. It's going to be a minimum of two months till we see each other again. Oh, man. Um, but we're hanging in there. Yeah. You know, I think we. When we started dating, uh, we were only physically in the same country for a year before I left the Philippines. Right. And we've been doing long distance for six years now. Wow. With marriage is, and all. That, that, that's it's, pretty impressive. It's, you know? yeah. it's, it's a thing, I guess. And uh, coming from a person who swore I would never have a long distance relationship. You see, that's, that's the thing. The moment yeah. you say, never yeah. will yeah. I ever, you will definitely do it. Don't say it. Mm. Don't say it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of set myself up for that one. And now yeah. I'm like, oh, oh here bomb. I am. <laughs> so, well, so what you, do I do now? <laughs> so, so now that everyone is in a long distance relationship, yep. if they've not been living with each other, mm. uh, can you give us maybe like your top three tips on how <laughs> to stay together? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're we either going to see a lot of breakups or a lot of babies. <laughs> Still trying to figure it out, guys. <laughs> I'll let you know when I know. No, I think um, communication, obviously, I mean, it, it really can't be said enough. Whether you're in the same country or not, I think communication is so important because it just, it makes your partner feel like they are involved in your life, mm. even if they might not be around. And I mean, uh, that tends to be like the common rift that we have is that we feel very disconnected from the other person because you you do have an entirely different life apart from them right yeah. i mean you live in a different country you have a different social circle your, your work is completely different um so i guess it's about making that extra effort mm -hmm. of 
including them, even for trivial things, like I'll send him pictures of my food, or mm -hmm. I'll send him pictures of like what I'm doing today, or what I'm cleaning, like just mundane things, which we probably take for granted, but things that, that make him happy, you know? It's, it's the little things that you want to be a part of, essentially. Oh. I know, it's all it's sad. <laughs> Okay, guys, hold it together. <laughs> <laughs> Not done yet, let's so, go. <laughs> so pre, Pre-COVID, mm. I call it PC. PC. Um, you guys had super busy schedules, yeah. but you always made time, you know, between his off season and when you had breaks on production yeah. to make those trips together. Yes. Um, but obviously, you're not on production anymore. Nope. Right? Yeah. Um, he's still working. Nope. He's not working. <laughs> oh, wow, so you've got so nothing to keep got you occupied. Nothing, you've got nothing. all the time in the world oh. now, but you can't see each other. How has it been not being able to work? It's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. It, it, it's an idle mind is, a, is the devil's playground, right? I mean, that, I think that phrase just rings true all the time now. Because um, when you're busy, at least you're distracted and mm -hmm. you can do other things and you go, yeah, I'll miss it you when I'm done. But now you are done. All, all the time, <laughs> and you're just like. Uh, but here's the thing, right? At least, you, at least you know your partner's not going to cheat on you because how are they going to go see anyone else, right? <laughs> so it's so Tell that, me, I so like that. <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to remind him. I'll be like, baby, you're not cheating on me, right? Because you can't leave the house. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It is true. Yeah. So so so, are you okay though? I'm all right. You know, I think having my uh, my pets. I've got three pets. I've got a dog and two cats. And they totally keep me sane. That's my dog, uh, Mr. Bo. Uh, and clearly, we are taking social distancing very, very seriously. Um, they keep me sane because I guess they give me a purpose. I've got to wake up every day. I've got to take care of them. He's a fairly large dog, so he requires like two long walks a day. It, it forces me to get out of the house. It forces me to, you know, not wallow in self-pity, mm. not kind of feel sorry for myself and all that. And, and my cat which are very cute and very hairy. Um, it's a lot of vacuuming then. It's a lot of vacuuming. Oh my goodness, I've been cleaning so much. My house has never Spotless. looked... Spotless. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it should be a show flat, you know? So I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm... You're working out because you look in great shape. Thank you, you thank you. I am yeah. running a lot. I'm cycling a lot. Um, I, I guess I'm just trying to... I'm trying to do all of the things which... I always want to do, but I constantly give myself the excuse of like, I've got no time, I want to sleep a little bit more. Yeah. But, you know? Hey, sleep is important, man. I love sleep. Sleep yeah, ranks join the really club. high on my list of priorities. As a mother. <laughs> As a mother. Uh, before you were a mother. <laughs> <laughs> that is also I true. Speaking sleep. of sleep, we do have some naps coming up your way. Got, yeah. um, but before, before we let color go, um, we've, we've got a little something for you. Oh, gosh, oh. yeah. Oh, uh -oh. no. Okay, yeah. so um, every episode we will have a trending section. Mm. Hashtag trending. Hashtag trending. Um, uh, based on, you know, all these different, like, TikToks and videos and things that have gone viral. Mm. Do you and have a TikTok account yet? No. Okay. You I'm, haven't fallen that hole, down that hole. I, you know, I downloaded it because I wanted to see what everything was about. Yeah, mm -hmm. I created and an account, but I just I haven't couldn't navigate it. That that's as far as I go. Okay, so I okay, okay grandma. I like I downloaded it and then I was like, and then I'm I'm lost. I'm lost. And then you know all the instructions of like swipe swipe up to see more things. I swiped up and I didn't understand. And I was like, it's nope, like, close. It's like, like when you get a new phone. <laughs> okay. I so, okay. So this is hold on. Then. Okay. We've oh, we've. No. <laughs> We've got a little dance that we want you and Barbara to do, and I'm delegating it to Barbara because I've already stretched myself out and I'm in high heels. Okay, uh, so th this is called the foot shake because we can't give you a hug to say mm. thank you for coming on. So mm. we're gonna try and do, uh, I think, half of the foot shake because oh, that's as far as we're gonna go. So we're gonna watch the video first right. so that you know what to do. Nine. Uh, it's a tune that goes with it. And it's like the uh, na 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 na, so, na na na. <laughs> so we'll get maybe like to, to the first twist, but I, I kind of I rehearsed this, so we're gonna stand That's up. Not fair! You, you have an advantage already. Well, if not, we're gonna I'm be just gonna sit here and laugh at you guys. For the next you five guys minutes. So apparently, we'll do, it, we'll do it together to the camera first. So apparently, it's right, right, and then back down, and then left, and then back down, and then it's three right. So da 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 da. da. The, <laughs> and then right on the inside. Right on the inside. Yeah, so, so like you tap the inside your feet of the foot. Touch on the inside. So just so touch. And then you touch the other person's foot on the outside. 
<laughs> and then you spin and then you touch the heel with the left. It's yeah. going to end in tears, yeah. so, you know that, right? <laughs> I'm going to kick you in the <laughs> shin and it's over. So you face me, I'll face you. So I'm just going to sit here and laugh. Like right and left. So okay, it's... I'll give you. I'll give you the music. Are you, you ready? You gotta sing yeah. for yeah. it. Yeah. Come on, meat box. Ready? <laughs> ready? And da, right. Da, 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 da. Left. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Da, right. Da, da, right. Da, 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 right. Da, da, da. Left. Da. Right. Inside. Da. Right. Outside. <laughs> and turn da. to the left. Oh. Yay! <laughs> We're gonna do it one more time. Oh my okay. goodness. Okay. So it's right, left, right, 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 left, right, right, twist, twist. Are you speaking English right now? <laughs> okay, Probably not. Tell. One more time from the top. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Let's go. Da, right. Da, 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 left. Da, 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 right. Da, 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 right. Da, 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 right. Da, left. Da, 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 we are going to go for a short break and we'll go and let Carla recuperate and maybe start TikTok proper now. Oh, we'll be no. back with, like we said, a way to make sure that you're getting in those 40 winks. Don't go away. You're watching The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. Welcome back to The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. We showed you how to use pom-poms to occupy the kiddos. And while they're distracted, you can catch that much needed nap. Oh, now, yes. Let's be honest, when we want to take that refreshing 30 minute nap, more often than not, you're still trying to fall asleep when your alarm rings to tell you that you've got to get up and do stuff again. Mm -hmm, exactly. Now you're not alone. Half the time, your body is telling you that you absolutely need the rest, but your mind is swimming. How many of you, just when you lie down there, all that you can think about is your large list of things that you need to complete. It is absolutely ridiculous. So what we did was we decided to compile a list of the top apps that we have tried and tested mm -hmm. to help you catch that little nap. That's right. Some of them have also come highly recommended from friends, haven't quite had the chance to test them yet, but um, reviews are good. Now, the first one is Paziz. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's the one in the top left. So all these can be found on like the app stores and stuff. Paziz, um, I've only used the free version because I'm too cheap to pay for it. Um, <laughs> yep. I paid for it and it is actually, uh, it is pricey. Yeah. Uh, it's an annual subscription. It's like a hundred and something. Yes. But it really is very good for helping you just zen out and relax. And the voice is not annoying. I think yes. my biggest problem is that when I listen to a guided meditation app or a sleep app, uh, it's either rain <laughs> and thunderstorms or it's a really annoying drony voice that just goes on and on. Or like the... Did you include the honest guys in here? No. So there's yes. also another one on yeah, the honest guys. Oh, okay. So they the do they do make awkward pauses, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so Paziz, they've got your sleep function. I think if you pay for it, you can get the focus function as well mm -hmm. for when you're doing work. But yes. in terms of a nap, they do have a. Uh, you can set how long you want the timing for, and they'll talk you into this nap. And you will hear in your ear. Obviously, it's best if you use earbuds or maybe a speaker. They will also talk to you to wake you up um, and it just kind of sets into your subconscious and, and like you said the voice is really really nice on that one mm -hmm. um, the next one is calm this this came recommended from a couple of friends yep um, where they've got meditation and sleep stories oh so it's like someone telling you a bedtime story exactly um, so it might be more oriented towards going to sleep at night mm -hmm. um, but it, it did come highly recommended calm Right. I have seen the ads for that on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Instagram. Um, but, it, but it is very, very important for you to recognize what type of nap you want to take. Mm. Naps of different durations actually have different benefits to you. So if you wanted to have a quick power nap, 10 to 20 minutes is the most effective, mm -hmm. and it does boost that alertness. Uh, 60 minutes is actually when the cognitive memory processing starts happening. So that's when things get incorporated into your brain. So if you've been studying... Uh, for quite some time, or if you've been looking at books, then that's the time when your brain actually reprograms that into the deep memory so that you have better recall after it. So it's oh, good to have that okay. mid-study nap break. Uh, but the only problem with the 60-minute nap is that sometimes you wake up feeling a little bit groggy because you've probably dipped into deep sleep. Yeah. But coming back out of it, probably um, it, it's not the ideal time. Whereas if you do the nap from 60 to 90 minutes, that mm -hmm. means you're going into a full sleep cycle, getting all the benefits of all of that before you come back out of it. I've tried doing that before. Mm. I was asleep for the next three hours. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> so make sure you do set your alarms. Um, in terms of the different apps, I think uh, the next one was Headspace. Mm -hmm. I tried this um, for a while, again, the free version. Yep. But we, uh, there was just, there were too many options um, so I'd go into one and I didn't like the voice and then I'd go into another one and it just took up too much time. If you're looking at free stuff, apparently Dr. Jeffrey Thompson's Sleepy Rain song is good. I usually listen to the Honest Guys every night before I sleep. Yes, I do. Um, As, aside from the really awkward intonation and pauses. Yes, they kind they of talk as if they don't know when they want to pause. Yeah, and that <laughs> really annoys me. But if you can just get past that, then it is fine. But give it a try. Let us know how you get on or if you've got any recommendations uh, for us yourself. We're going to head off for a quick break. But when we return, we're sneaking into Hannah's lunchbox today uh, to find out probably what is probably the healthiest lunch we've had all week. Potentially. Don't go away.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. It's about that time on the show when everyone's stomachs start to rumble in the studio. And let's be honest, every time we open someone's lunchbox, everyone just salivates just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and we hear the, the tummies rumbling. So we're going to take a sneak peek into Hannah's lunchbox today. Um, thank you, Hannah, for bringing what is now potentially, potentially, I was like, potentially, potentially um, the healthiest one. So she's got the smallest portion of rice I've ever seen, uh, which a is good. A half bowl of rice is actually considered uh, the ideal amount of rice if you're consuming rice with a meal. Depends on your definition of ideal, mm -hmm. okay? Let's just say I am carb queen. Um, so she's got a nice little portion of salmon in there, um, as well as some potatoes, some what I think are greens, uh, carrots. So we've got... <laughs> What I think are greens. Well, that's they're green, but I wanted to say what they were. Mm. I think they're long beans okay. or asparagus. Um, but there's a fair amount of seasoning on mm -hmm. this one. So you can kind of, you can smell the garlic and the onions um, okay. and the soy. But uh, I think that's great. I mean, it's a good balanced lunch, not over portioning. Um, and I think well it's done, great. Hannah. Good source of omega threes. Now that you've got your lunch ideas settled, it's now time for us to round up the show by taking a mindful moment this time with that mum of four, Dawn. And I'm here to share with you a few breathing techniques that you can practice anytime during the day. And what's so great about these breathing practices is how it can help you to kind of reset. If you're in a crazy mood, if you're feeling really frustrated, angry, tired, um, these are great ways to just find that reset button for you. And it doesn't take more than just a couple of minutes. So here's the first one, equal parts breathing. Just before I begin, I'd just like to emphasize the importance of breathing here. It's not just to get air in, and air out, it's also a way for us to exercise our internal organs as your diaphragm presses down onto them and lifts away from them as your lungs expand and contract. All right? It is also a way for us to help to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite of your fight and flight response. So when we breathe here, I'd like you to be very mindful and it really helps if you take your attention away from the television away from the children, away from things that can distract you. So find yourselves in a quiet spot like I am, seated, upright, tall. If you have a backrest, you can have it, but I will emphasize the importance of sitting up tall because it really helps you to facilitate breathing more deeply. A slouching position does not facilitate that, right? So find a comfortable chair. And when you can, you're going to start to gaze towards something that's just about maybe four or five meters in front of you, or you can even gaze to the tip of your nose. We're gonna start off with an equal parts breath first. So on your inhale, we're gonna mentally count up to four together, and on your exhale, down from four. And we're gonna repeat that together for five rounds. Hands resting on your thighs, you can cross your hands, and then let's begin. Taking an inhale for one, two, three, Four, exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, if you can, bring it towards your belly region. Two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one. One more time, inhale, one, two, three, four, last, four, three, two, and one. Rest your hands down onto your thighs. You saw me put my hands, one on my chest and one on my belly region um, towards the halfway point because it does help when you're trying to feel the movement around the belly area, around the ribs, and not so much just the chest. Naturally, many of us are chest breathers, we're shallow breathers. To encourage you to take your breath more to the bigger lung lobes around the lower torso region, that's where you have your hand resting there. To feel the movement happen there more so than the hand that's on the chest. Avoid tensing up the shoulders when you're doing that as well. Now with all the breathing practices that we do here, I like to emphasize 
for you to not tense up your shoulders. So when we breathe in, it is not like you are trying to suck the air in. Focus a little bit more on your breath out where possible. With the second method of breathing here, I personally like it very much, especially when it's been so hot lately. So it's like you're making your own uh, air conditioning using your mouth. Here's how it works, right? So it's a cooling breath. We inhale through the mouth, we exhale through the nose. Now we're going to be curling up the tongue. Genetically, this is not possible for some people. Um, so I do apologize for those of you who cannot do that. But what you can do if you cannot curl your tongue this way is to just make an O with your mouth instead. So when we breathe in, like I mentioned earlier, it is in through the mouth and out through the nose. Here's how it works. I'm going to curl my tongue up and I'm going to inhale smooth. Exhale through the nose, and that is one round. We're going to do that together for five rounds, right? So relax your shoulders, you can rest your hands on your thighs, and then take an inhale through curled tongue, and exhale through nose, inhale, out. Two more times. Out. You should feel quite cold already. One more time. And out. So for those of you who do feel overheated easily, you feel really hot, really warm, even outdoors, give this a try. It's like there's an air conditioning around your whole entire mouth and the air does cool before it goes into your body. Right, so well, my, one of my favorites. What an absolutely fantastic to gear up for the rest of the day. I want to try that breathing thing when I get home later. That's right, so the kids are occupied, you know how to get an efficient nap in and you can stretch when you need it and we're all grateful for some real talk when it happens. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed today's real talk with Carla and with Steph. Don't forget we will be back again next week, 10 o'clock with us on The Morning Show. But if you're looking for something to do this afternoon, you can join Sakina from Uppercut Boxing at 3 p.m. We will be back next week, like I said, with more workouts, recipes, life hacks and sanity checks. That's right, don't forget to check on Get Active TV's Facebook for the updated schedule. Thank you everyone for all of your comments. Um, thank you, uh, Sharina, for the uh, compliment on our little TikTok dance. I think we did well. You did very well. Remember guys, stay strong, stay safe, and, and stay, stay at, at home. Bye-bye. <laughs>